want you to imagine the scene for a moment with me. You have been invited to a wonderful, exciting dinner party, one that you have never been to before. You've been invited to this party that your friend Martha has put on, and it's going to be at her house. A dinner party thrown in honor of her good friend by the name of Jesus. Martha is well known for her fabulous feast. So you expect, you know, that there's going to be lots of people there and lots of good food. And so you accept the invitation with pleasure. She bows down over his feet and wipes them tearfully, carefully with what? Her hair. Oh my word, her hair. The awkward silence deepens until Judas mutters under his breath. If she was just going to waste money, why not give it? to that homeless shelter down the road or something. You also thought that same question about maybe that mega church down the road or something like that. You thought that same question to yourself as well. As Jesus responds, leave her alone. You always will have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. You have to wonder just what is going on here, right? Mary has fallen in love with the Christ, with God, the gracious lover of souls, who looks with compassion and a multitude of mercies upon all who turn to him for help. Like others throughout millennia, like the disciples, though, you know, John insinuates that Judas is the exception. Yes. Like Paul, like you and me, Mary has come to know the surpassing value of knowing God who loves her. Mary adores the God who adores her. Mary revels in the joy that comes from every very soul being laid for before her maker. And finding, instead of judgment, love and desire for her soul, for her true self, for her, she finds. <laughs> Mary shows her love for God in a scandalously bold and confident display of affection. And pouring out her heart as she mourns what Jesus will soon endure. Mary has heard Jesus teaching. And his warnings about the path he must travel. Mary weeps at the sacrifice of the Almighty God of her own self. As she lovingly prepares him for death. Then finally for burial. She grieves openly and shares in his suffering. Judas is resentful. John conveys the pattern of Judas' Jesus, life as one of betrayal, of trust, and hoarding of treasure. Judas keeps for himself instead of following the example of Christ and the one that Christ himself sets. And John makes it clear that Judas' question to Mary is not born out of concern for the poor. Judas is uncomfortable with Mary's display of devotion. Amen. Where Mary gives, Judas hoards. Mm -hmm. Where Mary sacrifices financially, Judas seeks self-benefit. Yes. And yet what Judas critiques as waste. Mm -hmm. In fact, the greatest gift that Mary can give. Mm -hmm. Not expensive perfume or money, but the offering of her very life. Stripped of all masks, given in service to Christ. Still, I am captured. I am captured now by powerful symbolism of Mary anointing the feet 
of Jesus. I am remembering, for instance, the command to Moses to take off his shoes, for his feet were standing on what? Holy ground. And I find myself deeply aware that for many of us, our feet ground us. They are where we first physically met this world that God has made. And I wonder, oh, I wonder whether the act of taking off one's shoes is not only a sign of respect, but a way in which we come closer to the holy itself. And I also wonder if by anointing his feet, Mary is also recognizing, recognizing this, that in his living, Jesus was as grounded as the rest of us. And that in being so grounded, he made all of us somehow holy. Oh, I do wonder if she was honoring his utter humanity, even as she worships his divinity. I wonder if she was kneeling in the mystery where we often see death and feet and hands when life leaves us. And I wonder too what this looks like now today, for it seems to me you and I are called to honor the same in one another, as Mary did, and of course, as Jesus did. Oh, I wonder. I wonder what it would have been like if we all approached this. Our life meets death with a deeper sense of wonder. I wonder if we could, if we could only hold one another's hands, if this might bring a greater gentleness to our life together. Indeed, what amazing gifts might be ours if we could kneel and honor the humanity in one another. I imagine we might start to see the holy there as well. Oh, I wonder. And there it is, friends. Mary saved that pound of nard for the day of Jesus' burial. She anointed him while he was still alive. Mary anointed Jesus for continued love and service and for sacrifice. What greater gift, what greater gift can any of us give to God who gave himself up for us and to offer ourselves to God? To strip our souls bare of all self-protection. To pour out our very lives and the dedication to the one who poured out his own life for us. Oh, I wonder. You know, I wonder what it would be like if I were to hmm, wash someone else's feet. <laughs> You know, I wonder what if I removed my shoes and my stock socks and I smelled the funk of my feet. I wonder which brother and sister would wash my feet. And who would anoint me? Oh, I wonder. I wonder a lot sometimes. Yes. What it would be like to do what Jesus does. Maybe in what Mary does for Jesus. I believe that I would wash your feet. Would you wash my feet? Would you wash the feet of someone who has done you wrong, has been mean to you and treated you differently?
making my way to become a, you know, a pastor, and so I gotta be real with you. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's been a rough week, by the way, but I'm not getting my problems. But it's been a rough week for my family, and I appreciate all of your prayers and your concerns for me and my family. But there's a situation that's going on within my family that I, I can't do anymore, and I can't help with anymore. Amen. I gotta let it go. Sundays or Wednesdays, 
at church? Or are you acting a little different? I pray that you will be the face of Christ each and every step of your way, each and every day, as you journey through this life, this thing we call life, and our faith journey. That you are a Christian each and every day of your life. Showing and sharing the love of Jesus Christ to everybody. And removing a mask that you might hide behind. And sharing that beautiful face that you and God created you to be. Sharing it for everybody. Because God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistakes. You were created and you are beautiful. You are a master. And you know that and claim that today.